You might need to bleed the clutch again, um, but it all depends how the pedal feels. You might as well try it first off because you haven't actually disconnected the line. Just the input. Um, but yeah, don't forget to put this back on. It's just like I say, two nuts into the hole. Right, so with the slave cylinder in the gearbox, the fuel line's now hooked up. Um, obviously your gearbox is in. Um, you can now look back to the top side. First thing is to look at your um, kind of heater core hoses. Um, they're just going to be the same way they came out, but there's three here, and then another three here. Um, just work those out first because as soon as you start putting your harness and stuff back on, the room's going to become tight. And now I've done those, so let's move on to the fun part, which is the harness. And the reason why this conversion is meant to be called plug and play is you get your plug, you only need one off this loom, and you put it into that thing. And I've just plugged and played my loom. That's how simple it is. Obviously there's a lot more to it, but electrically that's it. Sorry. But electrically, um, you get the idea. So there you go, plug and play. That easy. I don't know what it does, but don't forget this line. It's kind of behind the heater core hoses lines. It just goes straight at the top of the intake into there. So nice and tidy, they went on quite well. Um, Probably best to cover this plug because we're not going to need it. What next? We've got this live wire, the red one, to the fuse box. If I've still got my fuse uh, bolts. What else have we got on this side? So obviously we're going to do the ECU. Um, we'll cover the throttle cable in a bit. take as well. Oh, we haven't got a ground on this side, it's on that side because the battery's in the boot and that's good. And now time to put the uh, ECU in. Um, remember to get the right style connectors because these are quite similar and you only need one. Um, let's go. And then back in its hole and that's the fuse box side done. Um, We'll move on to the battery, well not the battery side, but the kind of relocation pinpoint terminal side next. Six cylinder ground, um, pass some driver side on the strip. And now the last of the wiring puzzle, <laughs> it's so straightforward if you just leave the loom on the engine like I've done. Um, you've now got a thick ring and a thinner one, and on your Pretty simple, but go in with the other end. So leave this and then go through the terminal side, obviously, because that's going to the back. You leave this signal wire here as well. And then it goes, you have to keep that grommet through, but pretty simple. It does help if you've got a stripped interior for this. It comes out under here, and you can't see that. And then just, apologies, this is an absolute mess. Wire it all the way back into your boot area. Where get rid of all this crap. It's there where I had a cubby hole tray and now I've got a battery tray. And don't forget to bring the negative from the six cylinder car. I'll show you that as well. And once you've found your ground from your six cylinder, find an appropriate grounding spot. Ideally, it would be be there but um, I haven't been bothered to get this tray out but you can see sorry for the light but there's a positive there's a negative it's pretty simple terminal you've got a thick one and a thinner one so they logically just go there and there this top thing is if you need to have a jump start the car and then you've just got to find somewhere to secure this down um, but that is really the car wired I can't believe how quick that was it's also a good idea before starting to charge your battery because it'll been out of the car for a while so 
you know, make sure it's been charged overnight or something with a battery charger. Another ground, just here onto the engine arm. Right, so it's a bit late, um, but if you think about it, what we've just done, we've done everything to get the car running. Now, I think motivational wise, it's quite good just to hear the engine run. Um, yes, there's no radiator, it's okay if you run it for a minute or so. Um, it takes off, no, you know, no proper exhaust. But think about it, it's got fuel, it's got an electronic signal to the ECU. Um, it's gonna have spark. Now, let's just check if the battery works. Um, make sure that nothing blows up or sets on fire. And see if the keys, you know, if the actual clocks light up and stuff. Cable. It's not really on very well. Hang on, I see a light, you can't see that. But the dash is on. I can't believe it, we've actually got all the lights working. That is incredible. Um, gonna put some oil in the engine and see if it starts. Okay, oil's topped up. We've got lights, let's try it. Okay. So it's another day, and after all that excitement of yesterday, um, I actually forgot that this car still has EWS, so that's why it wouldn't start. So let's talk about EWS, so that you need to do this before um, trying to start the car. And first step is to remove the glove box, so you've got quite a lot of bolts, about eight bolts. Um, so let's get that off. So with the glove box removed, you've got access to all your kind of glove box modules. And the EWS one is this. It's going to vary on what car you are. This is EWS two, but it's this uh, kind of pinky purple one at the bottom. So just pull that out. And before starting messing with this, obviously disconnect your battery. Yeah, it's a sliding star connection, so you just slide it all the way to the left like that, so it removes it. So that wire's cut now. Um, obviously you need to tape up the ends. And there you go, so black and yellow, black and green are bridged. You now tape all the other ends up so you're not hitting, you know, not hitting against each other. Attempt two. Oh, it's cranking! Oh yes, come on! Come on! Oh, it's going! Yes! Yes! So there you go, M50 version, M50 conversion done. Obviously, it's not quite done, um, but that has really motivated me getting the engine started. Um, I'm glad it was in neutral as well because it was going to bounce. Um, it took a bit of turning, but I think that's just to get fuel through the hoses because they've been empty. Um, so now you know the engine's running. Um, it's just a matter of putting stuff back together um, and getting the ECU secure is probably the easiest first thing. Um, remember if your car's automatic you won't need the automatic ECU so you can sell that and just put tape on that so you know just in case of water. Um, same with the additional engine plug, just tape that up, you don't need it. Could cut it but I don't think there's much point in case this went back into a different car or something. Um, you can probably work out stuff you don't need like these are something to do with the automatic transmission don't need these. Um, so the wiring side done. Put the intake back on, you know, remember all your cables. And then you've got a lot of screws to tidy up and stuff. 
and then I guess now big stuff like power steering lines. Um, so I'll move on to those radiator. It's pretty much it. And again, depending on your engine or whatever, you might have to slightly bend the lines to meet your steering rack, but it's not hard, just with some vice grips. Now I've read that you need six cylinder radiator mounts, but I've kept my four cylinder ones in and they seem fine. So it looks it looks right as well where it sits, but we'll have to see.